It's a bull. Boy, that coin loves bulls. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the Miami Coral Cam up today. Uh, looks like some poor unfortunate uh, crab got eaten. Is that a stone crab? It looks like a stone crab leg, actually. Tasty little buggers those things are. Well, a little turbulent out there, and uh, for you folks that are watching this video for the first time, this is the uh, Coral City Underwater Miami uh, Underwater live stream, and it's really awesome, and uh, normally it has a lot more colorful fish swimming around here. It's almost like your own fish tank at home. Uh, it also relaxes you. Well, <clears throat> the explanations of today, how many different people are going to uh, uh, put their opinion in, why markets are down, and what's kind of happened lately since that last smackdown we had a month ago. Uh, and uh, is this China's layman moment right now? I know that's not a China guy, just like the kind of the uh, meme here. So uh, is this uh, uh, the layman moment for China right now? It very possibly is. And uh, what I'd like to do uh, in this video, I'm going to kind of compare uh, what we've seen in down prices today, uh, which what we saw in uh, uh, the layman uh, uh, fall in 2008. Uh, I think it was September 15th. So I'm going to compare a graph to that time. I'm going to show you something that happened back then. I've talked about this on the video many times, but I'm going to sh show you visually uh, what actually happened when Lehman crashed in uh, uh, 2008, uh, and again, September 15th. And you're going to see a clear correlation of some things. Again, the opportunities to buy the dips, and I'll tell you what happened then, and I'll see if I see any similarities now. Um, what else is uh, to talk about here? Well, lots of things. We're going to go over a couple articles, but meanwhile, you know, I don't think that the, uh, uh, the, the if this is caused by China's layman moment, you know, the prices of uh, metals getting hammered this week like they did, uh, that uh, I think it had help also with your typical <laughs> your typical uh, monkey hammering uh, uh, corporations or entities that like to uh, uh, take advantage of these markets and the news take advantage of news that they can move precious metal markets down and others not just gold and silver right? they do it with other markets as well uh, but the algos tell them hey look this is not positive news for precious metals or this is not this is good or you could you know and then they they throw their weight behind it so I mean this could be a combination of you know the Chinese layman moment and a combination of uh, short sellers or uh, uh, people that spoof markets and uh, precious metals to uh, take advantage of this uh, because I have noticed again the monkey hammering has not been huge like it was it's been it's been since that uh, again a month ago it's been what they call Ling Chi in Chinese simplified Chinese parallel I wouldn't know complicated Chinese I'm simplified but the death by a thousand cuts now many of you that watch old movies like I do, the old black and white movies, I'm sure you've heard that term, death by a thousand cuts. And that's kind of what we've seen in the last month, death by a thousand cuts. Uh, I like to look at the big picture and the macro picture. And since uh, I'm a retailer and wholesaler in precious metals uh, full time since 1977, second generation, I have to look at these markets on a daily basis. And I do see uh, trends and patterns emerge, you know, kind of like the platinum pattern I saw emerge for a couple weeks there. We'll, we'll get into that in a moment as well. And uh, <clears throat> Also, uh, uh, the pattern of uh, the big monkey hammerings that used to happen primarily, again, mostly when gold and silver markets got monkey hammered, it would typically be on a Friday uh, or on a, uh, and again, based around whatever financial news, you know, they were going to raise interest rates all of a sudden that Friday or that Sunday night, uh, markets would get hammered, they'd get spoofed. It, they'd, there'd be large amounts of selling happening when no one in their right mind would sell, uh, only in an attempt to drive markets down. So it was definitely uh, fraudulent monkey hammering in my point, you know, but fraud nowadays runs such a gray line. The gray line is if you're you're too big to fail, you're too big to jail, so you can get away with fraud. You just have to pay a fine for it. But, you know, the average guy. Uh, but I'm not going to go there. So death by a thousand cuts since last month. That's kind of what we've seen. Is uh, uh, I've noticed uh, since uh, a month ago that we've seen little price reductions uh, uh, in the mornings, not even on a Friday or a Sunday, oddly enough. And take a look at today as a good example so far. We'll see. Uh, I have seen in the uh, middle of night these tiny little price decreases up a little bit down, you know, kind of a uh, uh, two steps forward, three steps back kind of uh, uh, monkey hammering that I've seen. And then when the proper news comes in, you see it happen just a little bit more. As in, this could be the case right now, what we're seeing. Maybe perhaps the, the, it is a, a, a 
uh, gold and silver are being uh, affected by uh, Chinese uh, Evergrande, you know, which again is their their layman moment, and uh, it could have an effect on precious metals. Although I can't right now see a direct correlation. Uh, however, it did when we had our layman moment. So why wouldn't it happen now with them? Tough, you know, they're a big economy. So uh, and they own lots of gold and silver as well. So it could very well be happening there. Uh, but I don't believe it's happening all by itself. I believe it gets help as I said, from these fraudulent short sellers and not short sellers, but the short sellers and the, and the fraudulent spoofers out there that spoof these markets down. And they exist. They get caught. They exist. They don't go to jail. They're too big to fail. Uh, so death by a thousand cuts, but that's only going to last so long. And it's only going to directly affect paper markets. People that own physical won't have any margin calls or any worry about it. They'll ride this through just like we did during the 2008 Lehman crisis. You know, it's happened once before, folks, and I'll show you how and when. Uh, <clears throat> well, here, the collapse of Lehman Brothers. And uh, I wrote this up, and there it is right there. Filed for bankruptcy on September 15, 2008. So what I'm going to do is, since we know that uh, Lehman Brothers in the 2008 financial crisis where everybody thought the world was coming to an end, for some people uh, in certain segments of uh, the industry out there, um, mostly for uh, predators, and <laughs> uh, their world was going to end. The predatory world was going to end until their banking buddies uh, bailed them out. Uh, but no less, September 15, 2008. Let's take a look. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the charts. August, okay? Here's the precious metal charts during August. This is uh, the month before the September Lehman crisis. And uh, where are we at? 1160, kind of bottomed down 1120. But what is that? About a $40 range. That's not too significant overall. Uh, and here, take a look now. September. We're going to get to September 15th, with his right here, folks. This is when Lehman. And look at that. It's almost like gold telegraphed the Lehman, uh, uh, you know, the the Lehman uh, bankruptcy. Or maybe Lehman. Maybe this was the day, and then Lehman filed here. Uh, but no less, take a look at this. This is the uh, 2008 financial crisis. Here's the price of gold. It was hovering in that uh, apparently 1140 to 1160 range uh, right prior to the financial crisis. Now look what happened. 1100 uh, we see as a low and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that was quite a that was quite a, a, a fall, and I believe it actually was below 1100. Quite frankly, I'm not quite sure where they're getting this number, but I think we went sub 1100 here. So there's your layman crisis right there. And oh, hold on, I'm in the wrong date. Son of a gun, I should be in 2008. I don't know what happened with my Kitco chart here. I knew something was wrong. Uh, let's go back. Ah, it reset. I've been having issues with this. Sorry about that. Uh, 2008. Let's redo this. <laughs> Uh, let's go here, 2008 and uh, August, uh, September. Let's do August, and uh, we'll do the rest of the months there too as well. Gosh darn it, I knew something was weird there. Uh, view charts. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to waste a few moments of your time. 2008, there we go. Finally got you there. Okay, uh, let's take a look. August, uh, the price of gold is uh, around, what is it, uh, going up to about 840 per ounce. And we're September, right there. All right, this is more accurate. Sorry, but I don't even know how I got on 15 there. Uh, so there we go. Uh, uh, August 2008, uh, gold was around uh, 840 as a high. It was high as $900, you know, so it's kind of bouncing in that 840 to 900 for the month. Uh, let's take a look what happens during the uh, financial crisis here. Take a look at that. Uh, 840. That is down. I mean, now remember, it's ha almost half the price now, uh, or, or double the price now than it was then. Okay, so uh, this is a substantial loss of. Uh, uh, again, what was the high here? Oh my gosh! Uh, over the month, let's say the high was around a little over nine hundred dollars. Uh, September 11th saw, uh, or September where September 15th, right in this range uh, during the peak of the financial name and crisis here. Is uh, down to 740, 840. That's a $200 drop, folks. Uh, and and silver was even more dramatic in its drop at the time. So, when the financial crisis, a lot of people think, well, when the financial crisis happens, gold's going to fly through the roof. No, it didn't happen then. But let me tell you what did happen at this time right here, when when uh, uh, S September 11th through uh, September 15th, when gold got monkey hammered at, during the financial crisis. And again, I'm trying to paint some parallels between what might be happening in China right now as well. 
Uh, gold took that couple hundred dollar hit, which was pretty significant for a metal that was under a thousand dollars at the time. And uh, when it did take that hit, we had huge amounts of people coming in my store um, and uh, uh, trying to buy precious metals. Uh, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't find it. All of a sudden, it was all disappeared off the market. Uh, everybody was quoting uh, up to uh, two and three months delivery periods. The premiums on Silver Eagles and gosh, you know, I didn't look at what the price of silver is, but hold on. The price of gold eagles was as high as it got this last year. It was a $200 premium. So when gold was around $700, $800 an ounce, you were going to pay at least $1,000 for gold eagles, and you are going to wait months to get them. Uh, again, not unsimilar to what I've already seen happen once before. Uh, when you're around long enough, you see these things happen. And if you remember history, sometimes that works for you. And you can say, well, it played out this way then. Maybe it's similar to th this time. But uh, uh, premiums were off the freaking hook back then. Uh, if you tried to buy silver, premiums on uh, silver eagles were being quoted like seven, eight, nine, and ten dollars. And remember, silver was sub twelve, I think, at the time, maybe even nine dollars. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm going to have to check. I wish I'd put the chart up here to show silver as well. But silver got monkey hammered worse, and you couldn't find it. It wasn't available. Uh, so what does that tell you? Hmm. That the paper prices got hammered, not the physical. There was no physical available. Uh, and then, of course, then we started climbing back up. Take a look at this chart. Uh, there's September. Uh, puts in the low 740. And then all of a sudden, there we go. Uh, no physical available at all through the month of September, and I think even through this period, uh, they were talking. It took a month or two before supply started even coming online. All right, uh, like I said, not unsimilar to or dissimilar to what we saw last year. Uh, so, uh, take a look at the prices shortly after that. They just rocketed. So, if we see a layman crisis type event in China happen, it's very possible that you're going to see a similar thing. Supplies will dry up a little bit at these low levels. Premiums will get longer again. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, we are going to see the uh, price of gold and silver go up substantially here again uh, and main, kind of maintain that level. Well, take a look here. Uh, October. There were some tough months going on there. So, but look where we are today. December 2008, during the worst financial crisis ever. Look at where the price of gold and silver is and think about where it is today. I mean, we're in good places, folks. We're double what that was. Uh, I also, like I said, is this is the Chinese layman moment. This could be an explanation why we've seen uh, uh, a good dump uh, uh, over this week. And, of course, the uh, death by a thousand cuts, to me, that's just monkey hammering by uh, entities out there in the early morning markets and the late markets when no one does any trading. Uh, and they've either blown all their ammo to do uh, uh, big dumps in uh, that are so obvious, or perhaps they just figured, hey, we almost got caught by, mul you know, uh, corporate media couldn't explain us out and explain our way out of this one last time. Uh, so uh, maybe it's just more subtle, like again, death by a thousand cuts. But it's not going to be the death of uh, physical markets and gold markets and silver markets. It's going to be the death of them if they can try to continue that uh, game playing. Well, let me move out of here because this is a long one today. Gold prices today, live chart. Um, well, here we took a look at 2015. I wanted to take, God, this page uses a lot of memory here. Let me see if I can, uh, there we go. It kind of pulled up here. Uh, gold prices today, live chart. Uh, this was kind of cool. Uh, what I liked about it is you could pop around to a 15-minute chart, uh, to a one-hour chart, and to a 30-minute chart. Now, if we go back yesterday and we look at uh, uh, when did that monkey, remember one of the things I always tell you about is, who in their right mind sells large positions of precious metals when no in, in thinly traded markets when no one is trading? Okay, take a look at when uh, uh, you saw these dumps. Yeah, maybe this was the Asian markets too. That's a possibility as well. But typically nobody would trade in these markets. And uh, September 16th, where is the price of gold? Price of gold is up in that. Uh, there we go. Take a look at that. Uh, and that's uh, September 15th, okay? We're sitting in that $1,800 range, you know, averaging 1795 1800 We were there for quite a look. Remember I was saying we were sideways for a little while? Uh, and look when this trade takes place here. Ready? Uh, September 16th, what is that, 2 a.m., uh, 3.30 a.m. Uh, this is our time, 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Who 
does this. Again, look who trades metals in this time frame right here. Uh, other than maybe the Asians, maybe it was, again, part of this layman deal, but typically all the monkey hammering and spoofing that I see in precious metals markets happens in this time frame. It happens in the evening, late at night when no one else is trading. Now take a look at this. The final hit is uh, uh, kind of levels out in the uh, afternoon. That's about 3 p.m. Uh, that day. And there you go. Kind of back up. And hang on a second. Let's see. Where is that next fall? That's uh, um, in the noontime. That's kind of during the day a little bit, but we're kind of sideways on this line. But as I said, take a look when this monkey hammering happening. It, it, it does make you question, is that real? It's really not. Oh, I need a sip of coffee here, man. I'm really, whew, sorry about that. <laughs> Under the year historical chart. Let's take a look at uh, the different times in history. Uh, let's go by, let's see, that's a 10-year chart, 5-year, uh, and that's a historical chart. Let's go to the 30-year chart. And uh, I kind of think, well, no, I'm going to go to the uh, all-year chart. Ready? And where is, this is where I think we are in the current fiat process. You know, we got off the gold standard more or less. We closed the gold window, became an official fiat uh, during Nixon's period. That automatically shot up the prices of metals and everything like that. And we saw this happen recently, too, in 2016 through 2020. Uh, and I believe that's the kind of spike. This is, to me, this is 2016 to 2020. Now, forget it says 1960, 1970 to uh, uh, 1976 here. Uh, just imagine that uh, my arrow right now is sitting on, uh, uh, what the heck is it? Uh, my arrow is sitting on uh, uh, 2016, and here is 2020 right here, and we're seeing this down spike right here. I think this is where we're at right now in the precious metals market. We're going to see this next upswing, uh, again, because of the massive money printing and the inflation that we're about to see. Uh, I do like macro trend charts, by the way. Uh, they, they show uh, inflation-adjusted scales, which are pretty You see all these little gray areas. Uh, if I remove those, obviously... Um, oh, not inflation, just show recessions, I'm sorry. Uh, those are all the different recessions, and uh, it just seems to, uh, some of these peaks coincide with uh, some of these recessions, and a lot of these peaks and valleys you can uh, uh, relate to other things, too. It's pretty easy when you start looking at news events uh, like we did with Lehman and looking at when that low was. You know, you could directly associate uh, uh, September uh, 2008 uh, uh, on the 15th. You could directly correlate that. Uh, drop in the price of gold and silver with the Lehman event. I mean, it's pretty obvious now. Uh, and you can do that on this chart with a lot of other things. So, uh, however, though, if I was to pick a past chart that I wanted to make a comparison of, uh, I think this is it. I think it's between the 1970 period and uh, the 1980s. I think we're reliving this moment right here in precious metals, and I believe we are about right here for gold and silver. Lots of volatility. It's like a roller coaster going to the moon. Uh, it can't just go straight up. You have to have those down parts to be exciting. <laughs> so we're on the roller coaster to the moon, folks, with precious metals. Relax. Don't worry about it. Buy the freaking dips. Um, this was kind of interesting here. This is on uh, ZH, and I'm not going to spend too much time on ZH right now. Uh, it's done by Phoenix Capital Research. I like reading some of their stuff. This is truly horrifying. Uh, yesterday, I outlined a terrible secret. Well, what is that secret, Mr. Phoenix Capital Research? Well, that secret, he says, the Fed knows the official inflation measure, the consumer price index, is practically useless uh, for forecasting future inflation. In a little-known publication in 2001, the, the Fed found that food inflation, not CPI or PCE, is the best predictor of future inflation. Uh, this is really interesting, too, because basically what this gentleman that wrote this article, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because we got a lot to go through here, uh, that uh, uh, the Fed is looking at food as an indicator of inflation. And any of you that actually shop at a grocery store and have to buy food, and uh, uh, over the last decade or two has noticed that the food prices have gone up substantially, f way farther than what, than what the CPI supposedly is uh, on a yearly basis. And uh, according to, again, Phoenix Capital, the Fed pretty much admitted that uh, uh, the real uh, guideline to use is the uh, uh, price, you know, the uh, inflation index of food. So there you go. Uh, and that's probably true as well. Let's just take a look at ZH if there's anything they've updated here that we can talk about. Oh, man, lots of, God, I would like to see some good news here, but because of this, <laughs> uh, anyways. 
Uh, not too much here. I'm going to skip out of this real quick and move into... Where are we going from here? I don't even know. Oh, Seeking Alpha. Nothing new up here, too. Again, uh, we talked about a few of these articles here. I'm kind of just showing you my reading list. And if I, folks, uh, the reason I do that is because uh, I want to teach you how to do this stuff for yourself. You don't necessarily have to watch my uh, deal every day. Uh, take an open mind. Read uh, pages like ZH. And again, uh, what I like about ZH is they provide different uh, opinions. I don't like corporate media because they are all about a single narrative, a single opinion. And anyone that holds any other view or opinion other than what they're trying to paint the narrative as, they either make fun of it, they discount it, or they deplatform them. So, uh, uh, you know, I like ZH uh, because I'm smart enough to read this stuff and figure out on my own what's uh, trustworthy and believable and what is not for the most part. I don't need someone telling me that that lies to me a part of the time, too. That's why I don't like uh, corporate media. Uh, Seeking Alpha is another great site to have on your uh, bookmarks bar here. Uh, again, I've read a couple of these earlier in the week, so not too much has been updated. And by far, the number one for all gold and silver stackers out there, the number one website you should have bookmarked out there is GATA.org. Uh, they are the people that, uh, are the smartest people out there, the smartest website out there when it comes to uh, uh, price manipulation with precious metals, who does it, and how they do it. Uh, a couple articles on here, the petrodollar era is ending, so what's next? Well, what's next is good for gold. Um, again, not going to read that, not too much to read. Uh, this is something we've talked about here. Uh, not not that there's not too much to read. I'd rather have you read this uh, this yourself. Again, it's gata.org. Make sure you uh, click on this article. Pretty good. Uh, and uh, Alistair McLeod talks about the funny money game. You know, he's talking about the fiat currencies, things that we've been talking about in this video for for a last year and a half. Uh, government will kill Bitcoin if it's really successful. Hedge fund founder Dalio says, uh, well, I said, I've been saying that a long time. You know, there's two things that governments and bankers hate. And remember, bankers are like the Wizard of Oz. They're the, they're the man behind the curtain. Governments work for them, more or less, in a way. Uh, so uh, uh, Oz doesn't like competition. Bankers don't like competition. That's Oz. Uh, um, and definitely governments don't like competition either. So, you know, if, if, it, if they think it's competition, they will kill it. Uh, however, they're not going to kill precious metals. Why? Because they own it themselves. They'd be stepping on their own tails. Uh, I was going to say the other word, but. <laughs> and uh, is this a turning point for gold and silver? Uh, a little premature to say that right now, but we will see. Tough to say. When is the United States going to have our layman moment again? Is it going to happen? Uh, the article here, the petrodollar era is ending. What's next? Oh, I did kind of click this article. Here, one second. For some reason, these things. I mean, one second. Oh, close your eyes. I'm going to make you dizzy. Uh, let's move down here. Uh, because really, the end, so what's the answer? All right, uh, and again, this is the petrodollar thing, and I kind of like this down here. Uh, uh, central banks creating money out of thin air and then charging interest to the governments who borrow it, it is not the answer nor the path to economic strength. What we call money now is borrowed into existence. When you combine creating money with interest at no manufacturing cost to the bank with a negative real interest rate, you drive governments and people to seek real alternatives to protect their savings. Yeah, that's Gresham's law. You know, uh, 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 good money drives out or bad money drives out good money. Uh, and the uh, the long term sustainable answer is gold and silver. Those who own gold and silver, and especially those who produce it, will be well-placed to thrive when the world rejects the U.S. dollar as a primary form of money. Gold's rightful role as a global economic, economic benchmark is just around the corner. Owning shares of gold in a mining company will become a license to mint money. Uh, owning, let me stop right there real quick, folks, because I'm not, uh, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Remember this. <laughs> uh, i just an experienced uh, precious metal dealer in wholesale and retail. I've been dealing with this product for a long time. Uh, and as far as uh, mining companies, you know, I'm not advising to buy them or not buy them. But remember, when you buy mining companies, you're not buying gold and silver. You are buying a company. And that company can be great if it's run well. It can be terrible if it's run poorly. Uh, the only problem with buying mining stocks is you have third-party risk. And what is that third-party risk? The third-party risk is something bad happening to that mining company or, or their CEO is making bad decisions. That's third-party risk. When you own real gold and silver, you don't incur that risk, folks. Uh, so let me go back to what I was talking about here. Owning physical, or what the article says, owning physical gold is akin to real savings and will safely port value through the pending global reset. 
This event will likely be a policy announcement which will occur in the near future given a certain economic uh, uh, uncertainty and dropping confidence in the U.S. dollar. Those in the know will position themselves smartly incorporating gold and silver in their investment portfolios of a, a real form of bullion or stock in a precious metals mining and exploration company. These kind of opportunities only come once in a lifetime. Are you ready? Uh, I suspect that's kind of a little sales pitch right there. And of course, they are a gold mining explore, exploration company. So they are trying to sell themselves here. But uh, And I'm not quite sure that governments are going to go. I, I probably would disagree with this a little bit. Um, I think gold and silver is a great place to be, uh, lacking third-party risk. And if you ask yourself what central banks own, they own gold. They don't own paper. They don't own uh, Bitcoin. They own gold, folks. That's what they have in their vaults. That's what Oz has in his vaults. You know, the Wizard of Oz, he has gold in his vaults. He doesn't have paper in his vaults. Uh, so that's a good reason to own it just on its own. Uh, as far as uh, governments turning, you know, it, you know, if the dollar takes a real dump or they decide a big reset, whatever the reset looks like to uh, 10,000 different opinions of it. Um, uh, I don't think they're going to reset to a gold standard. That that would surprise, I would love it, but that would surprise the hell out of me. Uh, I think that the current uh, administrations and the current people that run the world uh, want anything but honest money. You know what I mean? They can't manipulate honest money. Bankers, central banks, governments, they can't manipulate honest money. They just can't do it. Uh, so I think they're going to try to keep the fiat in the best form, the existence they can. I don't see us going to a gold-backed currency at all. I see us going to a cashless society, digital society, where uh, they give you credits, you know, like the future, like a bad dystopian future uh, sci-fi movie. <laughs> so uh, nothing good coming from there. Uh, but anyways, owning gold and precious metals, I think, is a great thing you should do because uh, it's a hedge against this fiat system. It's a hedge against declining empires. Uh, let's take it. Wow, man, I got late into the prices. This is over an hour since I refreshed this. All right, I don't know what the price of gold is going to be right now until I refresh this. So I'm going to guess it's up a little bit. So let me see if I'm right or wrong. Eh, sideways. <laughs> All right, gold sitting right now at 1752. Uh, uh, the range 1748 to 1767. So it's kind of in that 1750 range. Um, again, what caused its uh, precipitous fall this week, dropping like 40 or 50 bucks? Who the hell knows? <laughs> but we got some ideas. We talked about a few things here. Uh, silver currently sitting at 2244. And like I said, when gold gets monkey hammered, silver gets and silver reacts twice as much, three times as much sometimes. So uh, silver can be a crazy market. Down about 50 cents from yesterday's, uh, look at that low, 23 or 2238, I'm sorry, and a high of 2316. Wow, man, they just took it down below that 23 mark even a little bit. Uh, but again, uh, uh, sitting at 2244 last night, hey, look, remember my little tell I was saying for a while that uh, platinum seemed to be doing the opposite? So if platinum, it, I'm going to take a quick guess today, all right, just using... Uh, 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 platinum as a guideline. I think metals will be up on Monday from today using platinum as the... Platinum's up. It's been up all morning. Why? Uh, and it seems a little uh, a trend that I've noticed for the last uh, three weeks or four weeks is that when platinum's up, when, when gold's down and silver's down, and I see platinum up for a day or two, platinum or gold and silver usually come back up again. <laughs> so uh, it seems like platinum knows what the other two metals should be doing before they do. Uh, but again, you know, that's just a guess on my part and a little trend that I've noticed that, you know, it could be meaningful, could be meaningless. Uh, but no less a trend. Well, let's move out of here and move into, where are we now? A-I-E-R. Oh, that's one of the reading things that I usually uh, like to look at the articles and read, too. So, again, if you're following my shows, definitely put A-I-E-R on your bookmark bar, too. Uh, very, very smart uh, reading out here, different opinions, and uh, uh, some really good stuff. Uh, I can't say it enough times how much I, I dislike corporate media. Uh, again, you, I, you just can't trust them anymore. I like sites like this. Again, all, alternate opinions, uh, different uh, not alternate, but different opinions, uh, different narratives, different viewpoints, and they leave it up to you to figure out what the truth is. And of course, with the internet, we can really research stuff if we're not stupid or looking for answers uh, or looking f to confirm our answers. You know what I mean? They, you know, if you're looking to confirm your answer that something you believe, then uh, you can always find <laughs> something to confirm your beliefs. But uh, it's nice to go out there and look for stuff that, uh, 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 the truth, actually. Boy, I kind of went sideways there. A long video. Sorry about that. You know, one of the things I might start doing is I'm, I've been watching Wall Street Silver here uh, uh, for quite some time. And let me just do a refresh on this page. 
Um, and again, as I said, I love the enthusiasm out here. I just kind of see if there's any questions that I would answer if I was uh, going to uh, respond to some of this. Looks like next week is when Evergreen starts to go to zero. My guess is silver drops to 18 along with SPY dropping to low 400s. Uh, I don't know how big of a Lehman moment, that, you know, how, how big of a, a, a moment this could be for uh, uh, the uh, gold and silver prices. Uh, this event is just happening in China. Does China have the same impact as Lehman back in 2008? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so, though. Uh, and I think the Chinese will respond to it a little bit differently than we did back then. And let's go down here. I can't see it hitting 18, folks, but you never know. Hey, if we have a Lehman moment here again in this country, I can see silver going to 12, but I don't think you're ever going to find any of it to buy at that level. Oh, uh, let's see. Harvesting... Uh, Harvesting store this very okay. How to get silver cheap scrapping flatware? Um, interesting to read that, but where do I go for best prices? I'm looking to purchase 10 ounce bars, Canadian dollars. What is the cheapest, including shipping? Uh, miles, no, no, I wouldn't say any of those guys. I'd recommend to this guy stay local, folks. Keep that money local. Try to find a good local dealer. Uh, you'll get good advice and you'll keep the money in your community. And uh, wow, I should actually go in and look for some questions before I start the videos. Sorry about this, rather than you dragging you along with me. Uh, a lot of folks on here thinks we're going to see sub $20 silver. You know, I don't know. I don't think we're going to see it. And again, if you see tw sub $20 silver, I it's, it's going to be a paper trade. It will not be a physical trade because, uh, like I said, back in 2008, man, the physical just dried up and uh, premiums were just insane. I think we'll see the same thing. Uh, remember, these paper prices are the tail and physical prices are the dog. Uh, decades and decades, the tail has been wagging the dog, but at some point, the dog's going to chew the tail off here. And uh, sub $20 silver might do it. Let's uh, kind of move out of here and move into uh, yesterday's video. Uh, silver is down by now. And see if I can answer a few questions from some of the folks out here. Uh, let me get a little sup of coffee here, too. My throat's getting dry. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Sorry about that. I uh, don't mean to make you dizzy here by scrolling down so fast. Uh, no comment. Um, someone, a super genius, don't be depressed. I don't want to get rich, but how is preserving wealth if the price of silver keeps going down? Uh, trust me, uh, again, if you were in this for a short term getting rich or you thought that it was never going to go down again after you bought it, uh, then you're going to be clearly disappointed. But however, you're not going to lose a dime. What was your intent on buying it? Did you buy this to uh, get rich quick or did you buy this for wealth preservation? If you got it for rich, you know, to get rich quick or to think that it was never going to go down in price after you bought it, uh, then you, you are going to be disappointed and depressed. But uh, if, you, if you think of it as wealth preservation and you're not selling into these down markets and you have the opportunity to buy at a lower level and cost average yourself, again, this is just my opinion. Um, you're not going to be depressed at all. Thanks for watching, Super Genius. Don't worry about it. Uh, again, definitely do not sell into this market. Oh, my gosh. Uh, just ride it out. Take a vacation. Turn the computer off for a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, Michael Matthews, thank you. Mickey Finn, uh, no, you're not. Listen, I have purchased silver. Yeah, I've been through three markets here, and I bought silver at $50 an ounce, $40 an ounce, uh, and, and and my personal stuff, and I didn't capitulate. A lot of people haven't capitulated. You don't lose anything till you sell. And do you really think that silver is going to go bankrupt? You're going to wake up tomorrow and hear that the silver company went bankrupt and your silver's not worth anything. Just turn it into us now. No, you're not. Uh, so this is about wealth preservation. Again, not getting rich quick and not expecting big profits. And as I said earlier, if you expected that, you will never see it go down below what you paid for it. That's just unrealistic. Again, this is a medium long-term hold. If it does well in the short term, medium term, great. If it bubbles up, you make a lot of money, great. But overall, it's about holding wealth. Uh, and where else are you going to put it? You want to put it in dollars? You want to put it in bitcoins? You want to go to a casino? Uh, relax, man. Don't worry about it, Mickey. You're, you're anything but a... Uh, 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 you're, you're, you are winning. You're not an idiot at all. In fact, most people that are in uh, uh, fiat currencies got money tucked under the bed um, in other places are just, you know, they're idiots. So uh, thanks for watching, Mickey. I appreciate it. Relax. Master Sensei's got this feeling it's going to go under 20. You know, unless, again, we see a, a layman move, uh, moment here or the China, China layman movement, uh, uh, the China layman uh, moment uh, uh, kind of 
uh, pervades into the rest of the economy, uh, I don't think we're going to see it under 20 here. There's just too many strong buyers. You know, maybe the paper price, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it gets hard to start sourcing sur uh, silver, even at these levels sometimes. Uh, one monkey, many hammers, <laughs> to be true. And uh, to, most people are, may not like what I'm saying because people who are watching this are most like are holders and buyers. I say wait and don't do nothing because we are living in an unpresidential time and a new shift is going on until new 2020-2023. So the history on chart won't matter. Uh, meanings to the call. Let me kind of see. It won't matter until we're done with the slow. Just hold. Yeah, you're right. Buy and hold. Buy and hold. It's all about preservation of wealth. Thanks for watching, Angel. Uh, oh, not your problem. Yeah, I figured out Lulamins is a brand of yoga pants. So, and it was really cool. Our video was talking about how much silver ends up in landfills and quite a bit of it. You know, more silver has ended up in landfills and thrown away than, than gold exists above ground. So uh, that's an interesting fact right there. And Lulamins puts uh, silver inside, impregnates it inside their clothing. Uh, and I guess when you're done with your Lululemon uh, uh, yoga pants, you're definitely not going to uh, recycle them. <laughs> you're going to throw them in the garbage, and they'll end up in landfill, just like cell phones, TVs, and everything else. So uh, I honestly believe that silver is a rarer metal than gold above ground right now. That's just my opinion. Um, uh, thanks for watching, Not Your Problems. The paper market's got hammered today, but there's little effect on the physical price. A bit disappointing. Uh, I lowered, uh, uh, you know, our we didn't really uh, uh, raise our prices on any, we didn't raise our prices on any of our product at all. I don't know what the online sellers did, but we kept our product, we kept the uh, uh, product premiums the same. So uh, right now, it seems like I have product available, even though I was just told crew brands are not available. So, uh, or we're going to be a delayed delivery. Uh, oh, nothing to be happy. Great video. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, all you folks for uh, uh, watching. Uh, Rockin' Chucker says, J and Bullion now charging sales tax. Uh, boy, that's interesting. I wonder why they're charging sales tax. Uh, there's no sales tax in the state of Florida. So if you're in Florida and you're buying from JM and they're charging you sales tax for Bullion over 500 or or for uh, 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 U.S. coinage, uh, then that's not legal. I'm not sure if they're getting away with it. Maybe you live in a, a sales tax state. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, things are changing. And again, another great reason to buy from your local dealer. Uh, Linda Stevens says investing should be... Oh, okay. This is... Uh, you'll be ecstatic with this. You know, that looks like one of those uh, uh, crypto uh, uh, spammers. Sorry about that if you're not Linda. Uh, please elaborate more. Uh, Bob Meyer says I should talk more about politics. <laughs> I lost my Facebook account because of that, sir. So <laughs> maybe not right now. I do value these videos. I want to still see them up online. Uh, Boca Stacker, do you still have anyone else pertaining? No, nope, out of those right now, but I even got a more beautiful product for the same price. Uh, no, actually, it's a little bit more than Britannia's. It's a uh, St. Helena Angels, and they are gorgeous. I got those for starting at spot plus 295. Uh, Michael says, I wish I would have known today's prices yesterday. That's true, Michael, but the real key is to know tomorrow's price is today. <laughs> so if, if you can figure that out, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, Mike. Good to see you again. Uh, there's no way I'm paying the super high premium stores online prices are charging. Who's charging high premiums right now? My premiums haven't changed. I still got my, my low premiums. Um, so I don't know why all these channels keep saying it's low as possible. Um, yeah, again, uh, I can't tell you what the online guys are selling, but I can tell you my premiums haven't changed, Angel. I'm still... Uh, at the same price I was last week and two weeks ago and three weeks ago. Premiums have been pretty steady for me. However, I am noticing it's getting harder to get some product out there. Uh, thanks for watching, Angel. Guido says if they want to slow down people buying silver at the spot price, that'll so, uh, bring the spot price down. Sorry, that'll slow it down. Yeah, that'll <laughs> going to be a lot of sellers then. Uh, thanks for watching, Guido. Uh, uh, Guido. Uh, Randy Marsh says bought some... Oh, Randy Marsh... <laughs> Oh, that's a South Park guy. Okay. Oh, hey, he watches the show, too. Uh, a few calls. Hey, good for you, Randy. Thanks for watching. Uh, Wayne says going to take out 10% on the traditional to get a monster box of two-ounce queens. Uh, as long as you get them for a good rate, I, I don't know what they're charging for those. But try not to pay more than $4 per ounce for any premium, Wayne. You know, uh, just don't do it. Get stuff that's under that $4 mark. You know, silver bars, uh, like 100-ounce bars, are only like uh, spot plus three for small quantities. So, uh, there are some good deals out there. Try not to spend too much on a premium. Uh, thanks for Wayne. Uh, thanks for watching, Wayne, and uh, best of luck to you. Uh, same as you, Mark. Appreciate it. 
Uh, oh, Johnny, what kind of uh, motors? No, I didn't get a Harley. I got a little rice burner. Sorry about I don't know if that's politically correct to say rice burner. I got a rice burner just for around town. You know, I was thinking about buying an electric bicycle. So you got to be proud of from you got to be proud of me, at least for not buying an electric bicycle and buying a motorcycle. Uh, hey, uh, love Harleys, too. Maybe my next bike will be a Harley. Thanks for watching, Johnny. I really appreciate it. Uh, Peace and Grace says when I open up my computer. Uh, oh, by the way, Johnny. My last motorcycle was 30 years ago. It was a Honda 750F uh, with, with uh, cafe bars that, I, uh, that we put on. It was pretty fun, but what a squirrely bike and heavy, too. New bikes are wonderful. Uh, Peace and Grace says, when I opened up my computer, computer today, I saw the early state. Yeah, monkey, happen, monkey hammering. And if you wake up on the east coast of the United States, you'll notice, again, it happened overnight in thinly traded markets. That's how you know it's monkey hammering. Um, and by the way, 25 uh, Hurricane, uh, I'm glad you survived that, and uh, uh, I'm glad you got your internet connection. I know all about hurricanes. I've been out, I've been without electricity for three weeks at one period. I forget which hurricane it was, though. So. Thanks for watching, uh, Peace and Grace. Tree Climber, uh, thanks for watching as well. Well, let's see, I don't remember that's another story, but someone in a uh, PM. Hmm, sorry, my brain's not working. I can't remember what, exactly what we're referring to there, but thanks for watching, Tree Climber. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, thanks for coming into my shop. A local Ameripride 777 XXX. Uh, went to my shop uh, going back. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Celtic Knot says my theory is that a large financial institution are being forced to liquidate metals to cover margin defect. Yeah, and again, this could be large financial institutions involved with that Evergrande. It's possible. If, if it's truly a layman moment in China, it's definitely going to have an effect on economies and precious metals, as I pointed out earlier, just like Lehman Brothers did uh, with gold and silver uh, back in 2008. Uh, and I agree with you. It won't last much longer and silver will shine and conduct a new price discovery. When? Who knows? Yep, that's exactly true. Uh, it's not a matter if silver goes up to $50 an ounce or higher, and probably higher. Um, I don't want to get too exuberant here. And gold goes up to uh, $25, uh, 2500 an ounce and higher. It's not a matter if. It's not if. It's when. That's the real question. Uh, and it takes patience to be in this market. So that's why I'm saying if people are, are in the precious metals market with the idea they're going to get rich quick or things are going to turn quick or they're not going to see any down prices in that uh, uh, transition to these higher prices, then, uh, uh, God, they deceiveth themselves a little bit. Sorry about that. But that's the whole point of my videos here is to show you this, uh, to relax. Don't worry about it. Wait them out by the dips. Uh, let's see. When you sell precious metals to a coin shop, you have to pay capital gains tax. How much does the government know what price you bought at? That's a great question, Rick, because uh, uh, the truth is is that there is capital gains on precious metals, and, but it's not your local dealer or the online dealer's responsibility to report that capital gains. It's your responsibility to do that at the risk of being audited one day and uh, them finding it in your account or something like that. Hey, where'd this 30000 or 300000 come from? Um, which comes down to another uh, a topic I need to talk about again one day is receipts. I can't stress enough how important receipts are, folks. When you're buying precious metals, get receipts. And uh, don't hesitate to put your name on it. They're not going to confiscate it. If you trust the business you're dealing with, that's private confidential information. And in the audit, they're not going to go after the customers. They, they don't do that. That's just not the way they operate. Uh, and th there's no reason to because the law says that the customer has to do it themselves. So... Receipts in your name are great, but even a cash receipt showing that you bought it, just in case you sell a bunch of stuff uh, and you ever get audited, the, the government can, can't come and say, well, you don't have any receipts, so we're going to charge you for the full amount on capital gains. So receipts are important, Rick. Make sure you hang on to them and everyone else. Uh, Ron Mueller says, uh, totally agree central banks are trying to discourage the limit in public from and limit the public from buying silver and gold through manipulation. I agree, 100%. It's particularly gold because where gold goes, silver will follow. Uh, physical shortage and lastly, premiums. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Ron, thanks for the comments. Joey, good to see you. Uh, David Dobbenberg says, uh, uh, I'm one of his favorites. God, you guys are going to make me blush. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers investing. Uh, gosh, another crypto. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. You can tell. Look, crypt, uh, not a crypto, another uh, uh, crypto spam. Super Mario Brothers, oh, invest in crypto. Now watch, they'll go through here saying how it's the best thing and all these people who it's, this is all the same person, by the way, folks. So if you ever see these ads, Super Mario, whoever does this is all the same person. They comment to themselves and they make it look like uh, they're all, watch. So finally give the guy's name down here. And who is it that's made them millions in crypto? Oh, he made 9,000 last week. Uh, and here's the guy's phone number. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Kevin David. God, this is such scam bait. It's not even funny. It goes on and on and on. 
so stay away from these type of things here, folks. Sorry. If you don't know, most of you do. I, I had to learn. Um, well, anyway, I've pretty much figured it out. Gee, thanks for watching. I uh, went to Gold Soup this evening. The shop's prices are firm. Um, yeah, uh, G is in, uh, I think you said, oh, Dubai. You're in Dubai. And you were mentioning that uh, premiums are pretty stiff there, too. Um, hey, thanks for commenting. Appreciate it. Uh, Rob was at his local shop. Well, you know, I'm going to give you a couple gold, stores, uh, gold stars there, Rob, because uh, nothing like shopping local. Keep that money local. Uh, buying gold and silver constitution uh, gift spot. For me and friends, saw this price smash and may go on further, but okay. Hey, thanks for, uh, cheers to you, sir, as well. Thanks for uh, uh, buying local, uh, Rob. Uh, Mike says, I'm a subscriber machine. I've been a member of Wall Street for a while. Most people at Wall Street understand this is a long game. That's good to hear. i got to start looking at Wall Street uh, 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 Silver a little bit more, and I'm going to start answering some of the questions that I see on there as well. Uh, man, a lot of questions, uh, a lot of uh, comments today. Uh, Chris says, uh, the only reason we stackers want gold and silver and other precious metals to go up is for confirmation of a decision to get back them and stack. We want it to stay low. <laughs> Chris wants it to keep staying low until he spends all his money at these low prices. I can't, I can't fault that. Buy low, sell high. That's really the ideal way to do it. Uh, thanks for watching, Chris. Silver loving Lou, just keep stacking. You too, sir. Uh, and it'll be there when you really need it. I agree 100%. Uh, Z, again, thanks for uh, watching. And Charles Dumont says, thanks for your dedication to Precious Metal YouTube. Hey, listen. Thanks for uh, all the business that I've gotten from this. Uh, for my local people that watch these videos, uh, I really appreciate it, and I hope I've been helpful with you. And for you folks that live outside my area, um, you know, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I appreciate your comments, and I appreciate you watching and everything like that. And I hope I'm imparting some knowledge upon you and some experience that I've picked up from this industry for the last 30 or 40 years, whatever it is I stopped counting. Um, and again, I can't stress enough, uh, I advertise to beat JM, Atmex, and SD bullion on their prices on products that I do have in stock. Uh, and I always try to stock the cheaper products. I don't like the higher, you know, more expensive products. Uh, with that said, if you don't live in my area, I always recommend that you try to find a local dealer, even if you have to drive an hour or two to find one. At some point, you're going to have to sell this stuff too. So it's good to make that relationship and uh, keep that money local. Keep It keeps jobs local. You know, every time I I, you know, all the money that I make here in my store here in South Florida, I spend it locally. My employees do and everything like that. So I can't stress how important that is. It's also important when you go to sell one day, you want to develop a relationship with a local coin store because you do not want to be shipping your metals in the mail or FedEx. Trust me. Well, that's really about it. Uh, Going to have a nice relaxing weekend. I hope you do too. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me any time at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. If you live in South Florida, uh, we are a brick and mortar store here. Been in the same location again, as I said, 1995. Uh, so come in or call anytime. Uh, if you don't live in my immediate area and you can't come in and do business with us uh, and you got questions and stuff, I don't mind answering. Put them in the comments section. I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, if you've ever been in a situation where you've been ripped off or you're going to lose a lot of money because of something, even if you don't live in my area, uh, give me a call. I'll try to help you out with it. Well, hey, thanks for watching. That's about it. This is Brian Kuzmar signing off. Looking forward to have a relaxing weekend, and I hope you do too. Talk to you later. Bye now.